All right, people, what's up? Welcome to uh, Tips in Cairo Tricks Tuesday. I am your host, Dr. Patrick Silva. Um, I am a sports chiropractor working here in the Shoreline. Uh, it's near Seattle and Washington. Um, I have my own clinic, and, uh, and I do a lot of, uh, as a sports chiropractor, I do a lot of soft tissue work, uh, adjusting, and rehab. And I wanted to show you guys uh, a little bit about how to keep your hands healthy when you're, when you're uh, out in the world and actually working as chiropractors. So this is for the students out there and also for the existing docs if you wanna share this with some people who are having some trouble with their fingers and the wrists and the thumbs and all the, all the other good things that we overuse. So uh, the way I wanna structure this is, a, is pretty simple. So I wanna go over a little bit of the anatomy, what kind of stuff we run into, what, what is commonly injured. Um, a little bit about uh, rehab and treatment tools. So those are the those are the three things. So let's talk about anatomy. What is going to break down on this first? Well, if you're doing a lot of adjusting like this, we're going to have issues over here. We're going to have issues over here. Uh, those are usually going to be ligamentous, right? And if they if you have a lot of repetitive stress, you're going to get some tendon issues through the thumb. Uh, the biggest things that we run into though are going to be uh, the joints in our fingers, the CMC joints, uh, the dips, the pips, etc., etc. And so, uh, as chiros, we need to use our hands a lot, right? Chiropractic means uh, done by hand. And we're going to have a lot of issues around the CMC joint uh, here, um, as well as the uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint uh, right here. So, the joint capsules wind up getting irritated. Uh, tendons will get irritated. Any of the opponent's groups are going to be super inflamed, hypertonic and tender. Uh, and our wrists, instead of looking nice and flat, they're going to start to drift and start to look like this, especially if you're doing a lot of soft tissue work. Uh, other things that have to do with wrists and hands, you're going to start feeling it through your forearms, through your pronators. Um, sometimes you'll feel it uh, way in the back of the elbow, inconius, tricep stuff because we're pushing a lot. Um, uh, but those are all things that can affect uh, uh, affect your wrist health. So what can we actually do about that stuff? Um, ooh, uh, other thing, deformities. When, we're, when we have our hands on uh, people and if we're doing soft tissue work, let's say I'm using my thumb to release uh, some supinator stuff, some pronator stuff. So uh, I'm working on the uh, common flexor tendon here. And as I'm stripping this out, I'm pressing with my thumb. A lot of angles of attack you can do with your fingers. So if you're going to use your fingers on a certain area like uh, the back of the skull, if you're working on the suboccipitals, releasing headaches, uh, traps, if you're going to be uh, stripping stuff out here, if you're working inside the armpit, any of these little angles you're going to have to use different parts of your hands. And so let's say I'm using my thumb. Instead of me pressing in here, which is going to cause one of two things. It's either going to cause the swan neck deformity, right, like this guy, or it's going to cause the boutonniere deformity, which is this guy, right? From boutonniere as in pressing buttons. So you don't want either of those things to happen because that'll put more stress on one side of the joint or the other side of the joint, and then your finger's going to burn out. Uh, and uh, you're going to be wrapping, you're going to do all sorts of stuff, um, or you're going to be giving the patient different treatment because you you can't give them the thing that they actually need. So instead of that happening, um, what you want to do is you want to create an arch. So if you're using your thumb, create kind of a bridge. Think of a, think of a bridge going over some water. You don't want a zigzaggy bridge that's not gonna be fun for anybody. And it's also not gonna be stable. You want a nice, smooth arch. And so create that arch in your hand, grab the tissue underneath, pull it into your thumb. So grabbing the tissue and pulling it towards you. This helps instead of the thumb having to press all the force, you can actually use some of that grip force with those other fingers. So stabilize there something that they teach you in ART. And what you want to do here is create that arch with your thumb and then you gather that tissue. So instead of me pressing in here and letting this happen, I'm going to lock my thumb into a slightly flexed position and then it will stay that way and I will just guide with my wrist and my arm until I have uh, gone through that tissue and that takes a lot of stress off the joint. It's almost like punching. So we know about barroom fractures uh, and boxers fractures, right? If you punch at the wrong angle, if you punch here, you're gonna bust a joint. If you punch here, you're gonna bust a joint. You're gonna fracture something. So 
uh, you want to line up structures appropriately, just like if you're, you know, punching, uh, you want to line, it's not a martial arts uh, tutorial, but uh, you want to line up uh, joints so that force does not distribute to those ligaments. Uh, you want force to go straight through uh, the hard bony structures and into some other softer structures that can actually handle it. Um, so same thing with your thumb. If you line up the joints in kind of that arc, and then you have a different angle of attack instead of straight down, you're kind of going with the tissue or away from the tissue, so resisted or assisted, either way this is going to help you. That's with your thumb. With your fingers, what I always recommend is butting up your fingers. So if I need to get in on a tissue, use your anatomy and always have a buddy to grab and release, right? So if you're doing any soft tissue work, buttying up these fingers, again, creating that arch can be really helpful in taking a lot of stress off certain digits that you overuse. Um, so those are big things that you want to avoid. Those are some of the anatomical uh, issues that we end up having and we run into with the nature of our work, especially if you do a lot of soft tissue work. So um, the tools that we have are no substitute for these guys. These guys can feel, these guys can put force into tissues better than uh, any other stuff out there. So um, keep that in mind. Other stuff, how do we treat this stuff? So let's say, uh, let's start uh, over here. Let's say my uh, forearms get a little bit fried. Uh, my favorite thing is this guy. This is the J-type roller from Adaday, okay? Take this J-type roller, it just rolls in this fashion, and I just strip this out. All I have to do is a little ischemic compression. So this is a very focused foam roller, a little ischemic compression with my elbow relaxed, all I have to do is this for about 20 seconds and I'm solid for a week, right? Um, I don't have to really do anything extra. I'm, every half hour I'm working on people, uh, getting really deep into tissues for probably two thirds of that half hour. Um, the rest of it is adjusting and talking. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this guy is super, super helpful. Um, get, some, uh, get some force into these tissues. Get some better blood flow. Get some fascial movement, right? Uh, the other thing I do is just what I was showing you. So I'll use my thumb to strip out certain parts. So if I identify like, oh man, I've been, I've been doing a lot of pronation, I'm gonna open up that elbow and really try and torque that tissue in a way using the, my thumb on the other hand, and I'll do that on both sides because you always wanna stay symmetrical. So um, that's elbow, okay? Uh, when we get towards uh, other very specific points, like your, your thumbs will probably burn out first. Um, uh, this joint will be overused. This joint will be hurt if you do a lot of boutonniere deformity stuff or swan neck deformity stuff, depending on where you're trying to grab. This will just, it'll get super stressed. Um, and so we don't want, we don't want that. Uh, so what can you do at this joint? What can you do at this joint from a lot of gripping? Grab your myofascial tool. If you don't have one, get one. This is the Mohawk from Rock Tape. This is one of my favorite tools. I have tons of them. I've got Gavilon. I've got uh, other STM stuff. Um, Factor. Uh, you can get some cheap ones on Amazon for like eight to twelve bucks, twenty bucks. Uh, you get some titanium ones, some Beyond Stone. Any of that stuff is super helpful. Either way, you need a relatively sharp edge. Okay, so some of my tools have a one millimeter beveled edge, uh, and uh, and some of my tools are more rounded like this. But take the sharper one. And what you want to do is get in on the joint capsule. Just relax that hand, get in on the joint capsule, and just do some scraping. Just go in at an approach angle under 45 degrees and get that tissue moving. So you can break up little superficial adhesions just by moving the tissue over the skin. What you're really doing deep down there is you're getting fibroblastic recruitment. Now that helps change that tissue over time, uh, but uh, what helps in the immediate uh, uh, time is uh, is that ischemic compression so just getting in and getting better blood flow to those areas okay so that is a great way this is a great way to calm down some of these this is exactly what I use on my nurses who have to do a lot of like pick lines on uh, newborns and stuff like that um, on uh, my rock climbers a lot of stuff uh, I end up doing the same kind of treatment that I would on myself so it's a really great way of uh, practicing on yourself before you practice on your patients, especially as students. Um, 
Same thing uh, away from the joint capsule, you want to trace along those muscles in here as well as on the inside of the fingers. So along here and along here. Okay? Uh, if your finger gets a little bit raw, what I do is I buddy up my fingers, grab here, see how that tugs that, that tendon over, and then just abduct away. Pull that away while you're dragging along the inside of your index finger, right? So uh, that's the index finger, two joints in the thumb, okay? When this guy gets irritated, uh, you need to reduce swelling and inflammation. There's not a whole lot of tissue here. It's really just irritated uh, uh, joint capsule. And so um, my next favorite thing would be rock tape, right? This is my favorite color. I busted it open for you guys. Let me show you how I tape my hands if they get really rough. Okay. So take rock tape out of the box, take the sticker off of rock tape. I don't know if you can tell, I'm kind of a big rock tape fan. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is do just a quick measurement. So it's going to wrap around your thumb here and then come down to your wrist. So half of it needs to be at least that long. So I will fold in half right to here and then I will cut it right here. So the fold, the scissors. Make sure you always round the edges. So I'm going to sync these up so I can do one cut instead of having to cut both edges because that'd be silly. Take it in the center, once it's folded, you can kind of tear and pop it. Open it up, and then this goes right, right on that open space right there, okay? I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna rest the tape right here, and then press it down, okay? Once I have a little bit of anchor, I'm gonna take this guy, wrap it around, Take this guy and wrap it around without any, come on, without any wrinkles. Wrap it around the wrist in a fashion like so. Okay, same thing on the other side. You want to run it right on the inside of that seam where your where your hand folds, or else it's going to get really annoying. And then just wrap it around either this joint or this joint. Okay. So depending on your angle, just like with any other tape, just like with any other tape, this will end up being your thumb for a couple days. Okay, and it feels great. It helps support the thumb, decreases the amount of stress that's gonna go there, as well as helps reduce swelling and inflammation, which would be the primary problem. So once you get past that, you're good. And then you just need to focus on ergonomics. So reduce the amount of stress that's incoming to that joint, and that's what we talked about earlier. Um, last thing is uh, is rehab. Um, with rehab, I use uh, I used to do Aikido, uh, which is a martial art, and there's a there's a uh, mostly a geriatric population that does Aikido, um, and you would think that with all that flipping and rolling around, they're going to be injuring themselves a lot. You know, that's the opposite of what you see. Um, you end up seeing a lot of uh, very strong elderly people that have a lot of really good wrist range of motion. And it's because of the warm-ups that they do. So I use Aikido wrist stretches uh, in my practice as rehab to teach other people how to move their wrists properly. And then I add in a couple little twists of uh, some modern functional rehab. So um, as far as wrists go, if your wrists are really bugging you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab around the wrist and you're gonna do circles. So you're just grinding, opening different sides of the joint. Open the bottom of the joint, open it towards you, open the top, just like this. So I'm gonna hold one side of my wrist, open the joint towards you, pull back, up, down, and around. So I keep my elbows where they are, and I'll just do little undulating circles. I'll do 10 in each direction, okay? So 10 the other direction, and then you switch. 10, this is just a joint mobilization. So if you don't have a lot of practice with joint mobilizations, this is a good way to kind of feel out, oh, is that crepitus -y? Is that a tendon? Is that just a little fascial adhesions? What's going on? 
but this one mostly wants to stay passive as you are guiding this firmly, locking down those carpals, and then uh, testing out those ligaments, the carpal ligaments. So um, after that, we jump into the Aikido wrist stretches, which look like this. So hand goes to your chest, you're gonna grab around, grab around the wrist, right? You can grab with a couple fingers if you want, and then slowly pull up. So I'm using my center, I'm just slowly pulling up, and this is, scientifically, you guys would know this, uh, we're gonna be in pronation and flexion. So we're pronating and flexing, passively opening up the top of this joint. Okay, I do that five times and then I switch. One, two, three. And what I'm doing with this hand is I'm holding that, I'm holding the wrist so I can pull, but I'm also blocking it from jamming in the front. I don't want joints jamming. I want a little bit of space there, but to still traction on the top. So instead of this happening, you're doing this. Ooh, okay? So that's what you want to think about. So that's five. Okay, next one is supination and flexion. Okay, so pinky's going to go to the chest, wrap around your thumb, use your other thumb on the back here, and draw down. Okay, so supination and flexion versus pronation and flexion. Do five on the other side, etc., etc. And then the last ones, we haven't done any extension, right? So we did flexion and pronation, supination and flexion, and then now we want to do extension. So with extension, we're actually going to be stretching stuff on the front side. So any of your uh, flexors, this is going to feel really good. You want to go back into like a chambered position if you've ever done any martial arts. So hand's going to be here, and then I'm going to grab my fingers and then pull down. I'm going to use my thumb on the back side just as a little lever, and then I'm going to slowly move out this way. Okay, so I'll do five of those nice and slow. I'm gonna keep tension on the wrist and forearm the entire time. And then we do the opposite. So fingers up instead of fingers down. Fingers up, hold back, slowly press out, hold back, slowly press out. So we'll do that five times. And whatever protocols you wanna follow, usually I like to hold it for two seconds right at the end to really get some fascial uh, adhesions breaking up. But you don't have to, it can just be a joint mode. Right? It can just be really quick just seeing how it feels and almost diagnostic in that way. So uh, that is um, my recommendation for you guys. We went over some of the anatomy, some of the stuff that can go wrong in the hand, some of the stuff that you run into, some ergonomics, uh, how to avoid those uh, uh, repetitive stress injuries. Uh, we went over some of the treatment tools, right? So anything ISTM stuff, uh, scraping, little myofascial rollers, trigger point machines, uh, gumdrop stuff like this where you can like press in on it and it has a kind of a sharper radii so you can uh, get in on some good stuff. You can do that in your forearm and just press it in there or drop it on the table and do some of your extensors. Okay. Um, all right. And then we went over a little bit of taping. Okay. Especially for thumb. Uh, some other tapings for uh, fingers and stuff. If you want to know anything else, if you have any other questions for me, I could speak on this all day. <laughs> Uh, so I'd love for you guys to reach out. Uh, again, my name is Dr. Patrick Silva. Um, I uh, run a, a clinic called Human First Health and Movement in uh, uh, around Seattle, Washington, and Shoreline. Um, and uh, um, yeah, uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you stuck all the way through, I hope this is going to be helpful for you guys um, to keep your uh, careers going um, and possibly help out uh, some patients in the future with this video. So. Um, thank you again so much, and uh, my handle is at Human First Health. See you guys.